There we go. We're live. We're live, baby. We're live. All right, we got the flag bag. We got the hat. We look like shit. They're currently mowing. They've already used the big claw truck to clean up the wood pile that I made. I just watched the guy carry a table away. And now I'm trying to protect at least one table because I don't know, sit in, right? How this is supposed to work, I guess. I'm supposed to go sit and put a timeline together of my intense spiritual experience. Instead, I'm sitting here live streaming to nobody, sitting at a table, waiting to get arrested or yelled at, or at least manhandled a little bit. I think they'll manhandle me at the very least to get me off the table, right? It's gonna be pretty boring. Maybe I can live stream a little bit of the story. Maybe just the most exciting part, the part where I met God. I think a lot of people have experiences like this. Maybe not in the same way that I did, but in a very similar way. Something that in modern times, I think we'd almost just call abductors, right? Visitors going out in the wilderness, typically seeing lights. It's what I did. I was angry and lost and I'd given up or said sorry to the universe, or however you want to think about it. You know, one of the, maybe a few things that were just kind of rattling around back there that I just wanted to bury in a closet, skeletons in a closet, I suppose. As soon as I let that go, as soon as I spoke it out into the world, it was like, kind of insanity, but not. And I didn't take any drugs or anything like that. I went and I just started walking way deep in the woods and I watched the sunset. And as the sun peeked through the clouds, it's red and orange turned into fire and gears and numbers. And for a couple days, I just lost my mind in a good way, but in a confusing way, like it was just, it's like having every mental illness all at once or the deepest most intense mania that you can imagine. Just, just, I guess in retrospect, deep cosmic knowledge just filling my brain or, or maybe God completing me down here or something. I'm, I'm, you know, I don't maybe have the best metaphor for that, but I didn't get any sleep. I walked for like 10 miles or something and laid somewhere for an hour or two and just got bit to hell by mosquitoes and, and ticks. Man, so many ticks. Never seen so many ticks in my life. I remember being very confused for a few days. The day after that, the river flooded really bad. I was walking into the same wilderness and in parts it was flooded maybe an inch or two and sort of almost sarcastically in the back of my head, you know, I'm thinking, oh, I'll walk like he walked. I'll take my sandals off and go walk through the water or not on the water, but, you know, it's only an inch or two deep. It was a very significant experience, but it wasn't, it wasn't as intense as the clouds or the third part. Um, you know, I was atheist before this, so um, maybe part of my journey now has been reconnecting with the thoughts and ideas of who the J-Man was as a person. Pretty rad dude. I mean, if you get down to it, to just what he said. But anyways, back to the experience. The third part was the part that really mattered. It was the part that convinced me that this was real, that it wasn't just some drug or some conspiracy or something. You know what I mean? Someone didn't just, like, sleeper sell me into this or whatever. 
Although, maybe if people start believing me, that's the excuse that they'll figure out. Like, oh, it must be programmed for this. But no. So I'm walking around in madness for a couple days, just trying to sit and come to terms with how bizarrely real all these spiritual bits are. And um, on the third night, I was walking out of town. I had walked past the floodwaters this time. When I'm down by the river, my music starts getting weirder and weirder. It's, I don't know, sort of like a glitchiness or like when you hear, try to listen to speech in another language. Eventually it just kind of stopped. And I said, hello? And they responded with perfect timing, but it wasn't a hello. It wasn't any word. It was like noise, music, consonants, vowels, syllables, a word on the other side, or to him, the word is like an entire book in one word. That's how it works over there. It's like you're able to tell stories with stories. I just sat there in the most uncomfortable conversation I've ever been in. I could not look at my screen, but I wanted to so bad. They were there, just like a video conference call, but I couldn't look right at them. It was a lady in a gray blazer with olive hair, olive skin, kind of middle, middle tones for both. And she was just, even out of the corner of my eye, she was just impossible to look at. Alarmingly beautiful, like trying to stare at the sun. You want to do it, but you can't. It hurts your eyes. And so, towards the end of the call, I'm sitting there trying to respond to her, and I don't really understand anything that we're saying or doing. It's just like echoes and booms and reverb and music. And at the end of it, you know, she hangs up. I'm sitting there, like, bawling my eyes out. I still kind of cry when I think about this in the right way. I definitely do. But not like this, not in like story format. But I just, at that moment, I went, oh shit, this is real. This is real. There's no faking this. She just tried to tell me her name. She just introduced herself. And at the end of the phone call, I looked at her for just a brief moment. And I understood. That's when I got completed or filled or something 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 happened there that changed everything the next night while walking around the same area by the river i was just listening to a random playlist of some i don't know 70s soft rock sort of stuff 80s maybe you know what i mean it was like genesis and elton john and chicago and you know yacht rock basically and the music was screaming at me. It was something that I've, I have especially noticed after this experience the first week. But right away, it was the most intense. The music was like screaming at me. Not screaming as in angry screaming, but screaming as in loud. As in the lyrics were like singing for me, almost. Or not almost. And when I got to very on the nose, but when I got to Elton John's Someone Saved My Life Tonight, while sitting there reflecting at the boat launch in the river, I held my earbuds above my head, it was a warm night, and I walked all the way into the river until it covered my head, and there was no one there, it was just me, I, w I was not even thinking about what I was doing, I didn't even understand really what I was doing, I just gave it up, and he personally baptize me but then the fact that it's john on top of that that's just a funny sign or maybe a little a little cherry on top because everything's been signed now that's what i've been trying to share here and that's what i intend to put together as a video something more chronological where i can give you a series of signs where you can go shit this is why some you know deep nerd heavy logic pragmatist is suddenly making the most taboo claim in the world because it, it's really happening simple as. I, I didn't find faith so much as I was 
shown it all the way and asked to share it with everyone else. So whatever happens from here on out, I keep telling this to people. I don't care. This is my job now. Everything here on this side is like baby games. I don't want to really be, I do like being here, but I would much rather be back home at the end of time with my boss. Maybe when I do finally make the video, I'll just use that cut for the, uh, the death story. Because when I came out of the woods, that's what I was saying. That I died. That's what it feels like. It still feels that way. This version of me is not supposed to be here. But, normally. But in this case, I am supposed to be here. I'm the water guy. The signs have been very clear every time I try to correct them. Every time I ask him or text her or whatever. And this is a whole, it's a loaded tamale. We can't get into every detail in one video. But every time I try to back away from it, I get corrected. I wake up on the river with someone dying or I walk into a park while the police are removing all my friends' tables because they don't like the way we use them. It's like free will is just suspended in the Seth zone as long as Seth is doing the work. And as soon as I get too far away and start thinking about leaving, a lot of the extra energy I have goes away. Or if I don't have enough coffee in the morning. Oh, there's some diesel engines. We got the, uh, the grabber truck, he's moving around. We got a garbage truck, uh, sort of a, what's it called? Fuck it. Garbage truck, it's just a dump truck and a, a regular truck to carry the big lawnmower or some kind of equipment. All of this. The most disappointing is seeing the uh, city planners out here again. Her name's Billy. I've really disagreed with her over the last month or so since I started doing all this activism stuff. And uh, I don't know, I saw her at Community Table, our local soup kitchen, just the other day, maybe yesterday or the day before. And I apologize to her. I'm like, I yelled at you the other day, you know, maybe that was wrong. I'm just trying to put all the pieces together. And yet, I show up to the park and it just turns out they're here cleaning, cleaning up. And she's here and she's standing there with the cop while they both over explain to me or straw man argue or, you know, whatever, little baby games about why they're going to remove the tables, why it's good, why I'm wrong, why I need to calm down. Just calm down. You're not handling this appropriately. No, I am, because you're the ones in power, and I'm not. So if I'm going to stand up and have my voice heard, I have to stand up and speak. Not complicated. These people have lost all sight of what it means to be American. Or on the right side of history. Or stand up for what's right, or whatever. So here I am, soapboxing into my phone. What's up, Joe? You know they're going to remove all the tables? What was the prize name? Yeah, well that's why I'm sitting on this one. So when they come to remove this one, I'm going to say I'm not going to move. I'm not kidding you. I'm live streaming right now too, so if that bothers you, I'm sorry. No, oh, you're good. Okay. I don't think anyone's watching anyway, but people might watch it later. Yeah. When this starts getting more attention. Yeah. This is what, this is what I'm doing now, man. This is real activism. Yeah. Where I stand up and say no. I'm gonna, I walk into the park. That's the city planner, by the way. That's the zoning manager for the city. That lady. And yeah, I walked in here. I didn't. I was going to go to the library and do some work today. And I just happened to walk up and they're doing this. They're cleaning up the wood because I asked them to come down here and do that. Because I clean up the wood from the fountain to put it over there. And I'm like, I got over here all excited. Oh, they're cleaning up the wood. So I went over and talked to her and the cop. And they're like, 
Oh yeah, we're also removing the tables. Do you know whose stuff all this is? Yeah, you, you know, it's not kept clean, so we're just gonna take the tables out. It's like, guys, you're literally just punishing the poor. You're just saying, hey, these disabled and people and stuff can't sit in a cool shade because we don't like the way that they use the park. Right. What the fuck, dude? There's no way that's in the right. right. And you know that, and I know that. Yeah. And people will know that if I stand up and do the right thing long enough. That's kind of part of being a political demonstrator is expecting to go to jail for it. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, if they come over and clean up the table and then arrest me for not getting off of it, so be it. That's my job right now. I know that sounds like it sucks because it does. It's kind of a sucky job. Yeah. Well, all right, I'm gonna head on out. Yeah, hey, you don't know whose stuff this is, do you? It's if they wanna come get it, they're gonna throw it, they're gonna come. You should try to try to find them and tell them that they're going to throw this away if they care about it. Okay. Tasia or Lori? I know both. I would go leave and do it, but I'm sure they're watching me right now and going, well, if he leaves, then we're going to go nab it real quick. Make it easy. Make it easy. That's how it's always justified. No, let's just make it easy. Oh, let's just be, no, everyone be nice. Be nice while, while your rights are violated. No, stop yelling. No swearing. I could give you a disorderly conduct. Holy fucking shit, America. What the fuck? Since when are language intensifiers a violation of the Constitution? There's a difference between going into a Walmart and throwing a little swearing tirade and looking a cop dead in the eye and going, I think what you're doing is fucking stupid. If you don't like that, that's fine. We can agree to disagree. They go, oh, well, you can get disorderly conduct for that. For what? Having passion? Speaking in a way that makes you feel a little uncomfortable? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I guess we should live in a country where there's no freedom of speech. I think that's what's, what everybody wants. Man, I look good today. Look at me. I'm popping today. Look at these cheeks. I got the dimples going. You know, it needs to be cleaned up a little bit, but I kind of like the way that my natural goatee sits on my face now that it's long enough. It actually looks like it is something. I quite like it, actually. I feel like I don't look like a 20-year-old anymore. I look like a 22-year-old. <laughs> if anyone is watching this, and they do take the tables away, and you live local, you should just go get you some other tables. We should just peaceful protest some other tables back into the park. I'm trying to think. There's a spot over by Community Table where I saw a bunch of... Uh, or maybe that was over by the city maintenance building. I think it was community table. There's like a Catholic building over there. Somewhere in the hills, I saw some building where they had a bunch of old city garbage cans piled up in a corner. But man, that's like probably a mile away from here. That's a long way to carry or team carry a fucking big steel and solid wood table. I don't know if that's possible. Not to mention, I don't even know if they'd put them there, but I don't know. There's also a group that comes out and serves food here. As of late, they've started doing it again. I heard they used to do it and they kind of stopped or something. So maybe they'll have something to say about it when they get to the park and realize that the, they took all the tables away from one of the oldest and most beautiful parks in the city because it's used by the poor and disabled and they don't like the way that they look. It's that simple. They will change the rhetoric to match the required softness of the narrative to make it work. That's what everybody does now. Well, let's just be real nice. Let's all be super duper duper nice all the time. Let's be perfect. Perfect is the enemy of good. That doesn't work, fellas, I'm sorry. Don't work. So anyways, let's get back to the donkey show. What do we got? We got a lawnmower. You can see the table here. They made a stink about this one because it's got it's got a handful of clothes on it. There's like a mirror and some some foam pads there, which actually is super useful. Uh oh, now I'm in trouble. They're coming. Okay. Okay. Um, you're just gonna need to, to vacate the table. Okay? Again, I'm a civil rights activist. So yeah. what do you think I'm gonna do? You're going. I'm gonna guess that you're in hope that you're going to cordially. Take your belongings off the table. And if that were not the case, 
Am I my my belongings? What do you mean my belongings? This is my in, that's my house. That's okay. where I live. Okay. I wear a flag over it because you've done a number of searches and seizures okay, so on my stuff and lost my things for no reason. Don't talk over me. If we're going to sit here and have an adult conversation, don't talk over me. Well, then let's have an adult conversation. Okay. Okay. So, as an adult who has responsibilities... Who, me? Yeah. You don't know so anything about me or my responsibilities. To take this table. What responsibilities? Can you be specific? An adult with responsibilities. Can you be specific? I just was. No, you weren't. No, you made that point and then you just called me an adult with responsibilities. You didn't explain what that means. Explain what it means. That as a member in this community, okay. that when the Parks Department is going to need to remove this table, you are going to need to vacate the table. You are not higher than the Constitution. You're right. You're not. And neither am I. You're right. You're not. And I am acting under the Constitution as a matter of protest. Okay. Then as a... Member of the police department. Yes. You have been advised that this table is going to be removed. Okay, do what you have so to do. Do what you have to do. Okay. okay. You do I your job, and I will do my job. Okay. And we will see at the end of the day who is right. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Uh, sorry, I was in the moment there. I don't. I think the framing was probably on the wrong cop, but I'm doing my best here, guys. I am but one man. I have received no financial assistance yet for any of this campaigning. I've received uh, nothing but kind words and weird questions. Uh, my least favorite is, oh, so you're homeless? So where are you going to sleep tonight? Why would you ever ask me that? Do you think it's appropriate for me to ask you what your house number is and what street you live on? Okay, no. It makes you uncomfortable. You want to go home and be alone. I don't, I don't, the framing has gotten so weird in our discussions about things. Homelessness is just a great example. We're not talking about homelessness. We're talking about true street level relational poverty. A cyclical homelessness or chronic, chronic homelessness, if that's simpler language that, that we can wrap our heads around. So we can talk about this much smaller group of homeless people appropriately instead of lopping them in with a very large group of people. It's kind of like how they talk about unemployment, when in reality, there's a lot of unemployed people who just don't want to work, who don't need to work, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You know what I mean? Statistics can, uh, statistics and language can be manipulated to say exactly what you want to say with the tone that you want to say it. That's rhetoric. And the rhetoric right now is really broken. And so I am about to go to jail. I'm pretty sure. Or they're about to, like, manhandle me off the bench and then just dump me off somewhere else like they've done multiple times in the past. Except I would say this one is not a, uh... This one is just cops doing their job, so it's not like I'm going to get in the car and start making a big scene like the other ones. I suppose this is a... Take it to the chin arrest. Plead the fifth arrest. Man, I've been arrested so many times, I still have not heard a single... Miranda warning, or, you know, whatever. There goes another table. And there's the cops. And the Ukrainian lady, she's real nice. Watch them... Oh, there they go. They're doing it. Look at this good city activity enforced by the police. Remove their seating, take their bathrooms, no water for the poor. I like the part where they look at me and pretend they're not looking at me. That guy's not even wearing a watch. What was that movement? I didn't really look too closely, but there goes the table. Oh, they're trimming some trees. There's a guy over there with a... I mean, you know, trim away, city man. Trim away. Yeah, good old handsaw. Cut on the pole stroke, my guy. Some more trimming over there. Mm, there's, that, there's that zoning lady. I don't know the guy she's talking to. 
Oh wait, no, maybe I do. That's the that's the parts supervisor guy that was telling me to back away from the claw machine. You can see there's a mower guy out there. Oh no, everybody, detritus. Detritus, give them no spot to sit in. Just remove all our hands and then we can't make a mess anymore. Just make us little nuggets and stick us in a room. Honestly. Yeah, we had a huge rainstorm last night, like right before bed, like, like, uh, not long, but very intense, very intense rain last night. And it was, uh, definitely a, uh, if you got, if you weren't expecting it, uh, you would have been caught out pretty severely, which is, I suspect what happened to a lot of the, the stuff here. I mean, it went from zero to a hundred, you know, in a matter of 10, 15 minutes. I, it did get dark and cloudy, for quite some time beforehand, so there was some warning, but it was weird that, that as soon as I went up and talked to them and they revealed that they were gonna remove the tables, they were like, oh, well, you know, there's, see, look, there's all that stuff on that table over there, and I even tried to explain it to them, and they didn't, they didn't take the point at all, but it's like, that storm last night was crazy, yeah, some people probably got caught out, had to run for shelter, it was not the kind of rain that you wanna sit under, it would be like sitting under the, the bucket at your local water park, but it just keeps going. You know what I mean? Or sitting inside of a fire hydrant, it's too much water. That's a seek shelter moment. Any kind of shelter, just so you can blink and breathe easy. So I wouldn't blame anyone for having left some stuff out. I've not seen these people uh, leave stuff out days at a time. They will leave things out because there's no day storage in this town. No one in this town provides anyone with an opportunity to store any of their things. So everyone stuck on the street is left carrying their life around or, you know, maybe leaving your stuff you want, but your least valued items somewhere to potentially be lost, stolen, or thrown away. That's just the risk you have to take when there's nowhere to store it. And you know, not all of these people have the time or energy to find some really nice hiding spot or to build, you know, some little spot, you know, they're all struggling people. Nobody understands or seems to want to understand that just, just being on the street is a full-time job. It's so hard. You have to, you have to constantly be thinking about all of your needs all the time. If I had to go to the bathroom right now, where would I go? If I needed more water right now, where would I go? I should definitely hit my vape right now. I'm getting a little too close to jail time to not have regrets about not uh, getting my nick in. I don't know how live streams on Twitter work, but hopefully it just lets me keep going even through the boring part here. I can try to fill dead air. But I'm no radio DJ. Shadow Wizard Money Gang. We love casting spells. Legalize nuclear bombs. So I was nailing that one. Double kill. Triple kill. Quadra kill. Penta kill. See, I don't, I don't know. Even if I, even if I wasn't supposed to be the biggest thing since sliced bread, I got some, I got some talent out of the, out of the deal. So we'll just keep riding this storm out till I'm dead, or things improve. The beatings will continue until morale improves. <laughs> I don't even know what that's from. I just love that one. And I'm probably saying it wrong, but... Man, the hat's got some flavor on camera. I had to uh, sew this hat up recently. I sewed it up with some cable cords and a little needle, just very carefully. Just enough to give the straw hat a a little more life it's got work to do just like I do it's a it's a symbol a symbol of freedom freedom from authority when you think you're right people need to treat you like you might be right that's called America 
they don't have to. But when you go up to your city hall and try to speak, uh, America. I don't want democracy, I just want representation. That's the other half of the equation, guys. You're supposed to be represented by your representatives. So going to the city and delivering the best speech of your life and then trying to go back again just to say, hey, can you clean up the park, etc., etc. Here's what I've been doing. I, I didn't have a speech. They just interrupt me to go, oh, well, don't say anything bad about the city at City Hall. And then interrupt me halfway through that, just trying to respond to that with, well, don't say anything bad specific about any anyone specific, and it's like, I'm not. I'm not. So that, that, that city council president just trying to shut, shut down my voice in America, in an open town hall meeting. This is why I walk around with flags. That and these lovely police interactions that I've been having. But again, I suppose this is real grassroots activism. Where, uh, activism. I keep getting that one wrong. A little Freudian slip. A real grassroots activism. Activism isn't sitting in the middle of a highway causing a bunch of strangers a problem. It's sitting on a park table that the police in the city are removing to punish the poor. In this case, more to, maybe to overemphasize details, and saying, I will not move. Real activism is sitting at the back of the bus. Not at the back of the bus. I always get that mixed up too. Not sitting at the back of the bus and saying, I want to sit up here. Real activism is taking all your overpriced, overtaxed tea and going, let's do the biggest joke ever and make the world's biggest cup of tea in the harbor. That'll show them. Isn't that a funny statement? Maybe not an, an entirely peaceful protest, but protests don't need to be entirely peaceful all the time either. There are reasons for violence. It's just always a last resort. How do we all go through school and history and, and see the world and nobody nobody sees it like, like I do now? Not even I saw it like I do now. And it's so simple. There are people. There are people that see it like I do now. But when you're just one person, you have limited reach, especially when you're just one poor person. I don't have any money to help any of my friends up here. I don't have any resources to say extra clean or look look pretty. But what I do have is a particular set of skills. Skills that make me a nightmare. For guys like these. Where's the other ones? Oh, guys like those. They're standing behind me to plan their move. What's up, fellas? Say hello to the internet. Oh, yeah. I need people to pay attention to me, even if not for the crazy spiritual stuff, at least for the civil activism, because when I get down into it with people and give them enough of the details, they go, yeah, you're right. Keep fighting. So good, support me, support the fight. Let's end poverty. It's America, we have so much money, we do so well. And so much money is being shoveled into services like the homeless industrial complex to do a whole lot of nothing. Then we end up with a bunch of soft-handed people taking the only good place for disabled people like my friend Marcus who has a, there's a lot of people down here have a really hard time with mobility. They. They're putting in two miles a day tops, and that is their best. And now they're taking away some of the seating in one of the only cool, comfortable places to sit down and let time pass for them. Yikes. They moved again. Uh-oh. Oh, how the turns have tabled. Wicky, wicky. Look at that, they cleaned up that whole bush over there. 
They killed that entire plant row. Why? Because fuck us, I guess. I don't know why they do that. They took a whole they took a whole fucking tree out. Look at that big stump. They took that whole tree out. Why? Huh? Why cop man? Huh? Why city ladies? Who's that lady? Who are you? I don't think that's Emily, is it? Who is that lady? She looks familiar. Some city lady or something. I mean, she's friends with the city planner, so. Uh oh. Trying to make everyone hate me. I can feel it, it's coming close. Look at that, they got rid of all the, all the bushes. Might as well just cut all the grass off too and pave it into another parking lot, right? Yeah. Hmm. This is not the video I was trying to make today. Is this the video? Is this the one that, that gets me a lot of attention? Yikes. Maybe I already have a lot of attention. I can't really tell half the time. Where's the vape? There it is. Vape panic. Gotta get my nicotine in before these police take me to the Eau Claire County Jail. Do you wanna know what they do in there? Their booking is a panopticon of isolation cells. Isolation. Oh, you come in for a misdemeanor for spray painting or whatever, and it's a Friday? I hope you like sitting in isolation for three days straight because that's where you're going. Welcome to Eau Claire. We love you. Unless you do something wrong, then we hurt you. Unless we don't like you, then we hurt you. There's a difference between punishing someone and hurting someone. When you take the tables away in the park, you're hurting people. When you put someone in isolation for a misdemeanor, gross isolation, not just like, oh, it's yeah, it's just a cell, he's complaining. No, it's literally a mat on the floor and a toilet on the wall. The only way it was any more restrictive is if they'd have put me in a turtle suit and taken the toilet away and just gave it a hole in the floor. Because I know that exists too. I've never been to any of those kind of cells, but... <sighs> turtle suits, like a, it's like jail clothes that like rip away so you can't turn them into a rope or anything like that and hurt yourself with them. that dark little guy, a real dark little bird. He's got a snack and everything. I don't know what that guy is, but he's adorable. A chubby little bastard. Nice deep brown with the black on the wings. Very pretty bird. I don't know what that guy is. Oh, look at his head bob. So cute. Uh, how about another story that I figured out? So there's a placard here. We can see the back of the sign here. It was live free, Robert. Robert, unfortunately, died. He was also 35. He died in the river at about the same time that I had my, well, at the same time that I had my spiritual experience and walked myself into the river, which is one of the signs that I'm very uncomfortable with. But you can see here, there's a statue of a bald eagle and there's all kinds of lore, like just all over town for this eagle's name is Old Abe. Old Abe was a war eagle used in the Civil War. He was like a, like a hawk, like a guy with a, a leather glove that trains a hawk, but it was a bald eagle. That's like the coolest, most America thing I've ever heard. Forget guns and burgers. How about a fucking war eagle? That's rad. This park is old. This park is great history. It has great trees, one of which they just cut down. This is my favorite tree. That tree is gorgeous. And it also has this fountain. The fountain is the wood that I cleaned up. I didn't break the all the wood covering the fountain, but someone else did. Oh, lawnmowers are here. 
quiet reflection time. that I don't know how live streams on Twitter work. So if they go to arrest me and I don't stop the stream, it should still be okay. It's a live stream. So whenever the phone stops recording, I guess the recording will stop. Or at least I'll just run under that assumption and pray for the best. Amen. I am noticing there's no other tables left in the park. Wait him out. Classic. Classic. It's all classic. Story is old as time. Look at the shiny ears in my mustache. What's up with that? That's like when I was a kid where I had the blonde mix in. Still wish it were thicker. You know, I bet if I got some, like... I'm sure there's some beard goo that will thicken the hairs up to make them punch out more. Never been a fan of the whole, like drawing the beard underneath the hairs thing. Although that works for certain hairstyles. Who was I looking at the other day that had that? Oh, uh, the guy that plays Robbie Rodden. Rest in peace. Uh-oh, here we go. Oh, what's up? What's the story, buddy? What do you mean? Well, they gotta take this picnic table. Okay. So here's the deal. I need you to get off the picnic table and get your stuff off the picnic table so that they can take it. I'm not gonna do that. Okay, if you're not gonna do that, then we are going to take you off of the picnic table, which I would rather not do. But they're taking the picnic table, so if we have to physically remove you from it for that to happen, we are gonna do that. So you're gonna you're gonna arrest or ticket me for that? If you're going to fight us, yes I am. I'm not going to fight you. I'm sitting on this table as an act of civil unrest. I, I, I know, but okay. you can't you know what they always say when you do civil unrest? You can't do that. Get in the get in the back of the bus. Okay. So I'm not going to. Okay, then we are going to physically remove you from the picnic. Okay, you don't have to be that rough. I'm I'm not a fighter. I'm not gonna fight you. But I'm going to make you force me to get off this table or arrest me. Can I force you by telling you that I'm forcing you, or do I have to If you touch me and pull me away from the table and say, I'm not going to allow you to sit here, then we're done. Yes. Then this is then I go walk on and go do something else or go to jail either way. That's what we're gonna do. Then. Okay. Okay. So stand up. Okay. Do you want to get your stuff? Or yeah. Would of you course. Like us to do no. Of course. Okay. okay. Thank you. Could you gather your stuff, please, and move so they can get the picnic table? Well. Is this all yours? Or don't don't reframe it as a request now because it's no, not a request. No, I'm not requesting. I'm yes. You it's an order. After, it's yes. a police order to it get off the fucking order. table. Correct. Okay. Yes, or I I or we are going to get I, more physical with no I know I understand that yes. I'm just swearing I am, as if I, I was doing it I am ordering you that you have to get off the picnic table okay you can get your stuff or none we, of this or is we will. none of this is my stuff but it is my friend's stuff oh okay well if you would like to gather it for them you can otherwise the parks department is going to take it and discard it so I guess I'll that's up to you but either way it's going to come off table so that they can take it. Understood. Thank you, sir. God bless you, gentlemen. God bless America. Are you done, then, sir? Are you not taking this? I didn't understand. Are you this, is, this is either Tasia's or Lori's stuff, I'm almost certain. Okay, but if, but she, if either it? of them left it here, it's because we had that massive shower last night and they probably got yeah. caught out where... The tree was not enough protection, so they left the stuff that they did not value. That's not to say that Lori or Tasia does not plan on coming back to this table and cleaning it up, but that's the excuse everyone's using to remove the tables, or at least that's the excuse the uh, city planner gave me. Yeah, that feels real nice, the, the zoning manager standing out in the park as they take seating away from the disabled and poor. That's why I'm sitting on the table. Alright, well, I can tell you, probably no it looks like there's an open bench over there. If you 
you want to have a seat there as long as you're not as long as you're not in their way they got some other stuff they're doing today with trees and cutting and whatever that they have to get done sure you're welcome to go and sit on that pave paradise and turn it into a parking lot People why are they cutting down the big trees in the oldest park in the city i have no uh, this is and, awful this is yeah. genuinely awful and I've been trying to stand up and do the right thing with the city, with the police, with the homeless industrial complex, and see what I have to do. See how I see how my efforts well, are being responded have, to. See to the representation that I'm getting in our representative democracy. It is. It is. I'm just telling you the full story so you know why I am attempting to refuse to get off of the table. That's all. Okay. Because you seem like one of the good ones. You're having a real adult conversation to me, not like the other cops who sit and talk down to me like a five-year-old. So yeah. thank you, well, Officer O'Malley. Yes, and, and that's the thing. Like, ultimately, yeah. you're going to have to do what you No, I get all that. I don't, I, don't need, I don't need my job explained to me. I'm just giving you props. Like, shout out. You're one of the good ones, for real. All right, good luck you're, you're not the only cop that I've had a great interaction with, so I appreciate it, for real. Yeah. Because in doing this, I've had a lot of police interactions in the last couple weeks. I believe it. And most of them have been really shit. So for you to come up here and talk to me like an adult, fucking thank you. Okay. Well, thank you for not making us fight with you. I was not looking forward to that. No, I just needed you to order me to do it. Okay. Yes. All right. Have a good one, man. God bless. The good ending. All right. Peace out, Twitter. I'll see you soon.